guys, it's Tarko Cyclone FPV. It is about 6.17 in the morning on Sunday, September 22nd. And I'm going to do a quick video. Oh, it's, it's not gonna be that quick, actually. It's gonna be a video on getting, um, connecting a uh, FR Sky uh, uh, long range uh, R9 Slim Plus to a Hobbywing uh, F4 G2 flight controller. And it's gonna, we're gonna go over kind of how to set it up, how to get your telemetry, how to get your SBUS signal, um, and uh, how to do things like using soft serial so if you have other uh, components you're going to be attaching um, then you don't have to tie up certain um, UARTs if you don't want to. All right. So I, I do know that there is an issue with um, uh, some of the uh, firmware on the Omnibus F4SD and some of you guys have written me about it and could not get the telemetry to work and I've, I've experienced the exact same thing. So we're going to go through this right now and see if we can knock this out for you guys and hopefully it'll help. There'll be a couple different ways to install this. Uh, and to configure it in Betaflight. So we're gonna go over all that real quickly, okay? Uh, the first thing is I'm gonna give you a screenshot of what we're working with here. And that is going to be this right here. Uh, you've got the Hobbywing 60 FPS-C, the Hobbywing F4 G2, the uh, R9 Slim Plus, and then just the cable to connect that together. That's what we're gonna go ahead and start doing first. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you. I'm gonna move this out of the way and get this soldered on. Uh, and to do that, I'm gonna have to give you this angle to look at because uh, I've got to use the old man glasses. And here in the corner, you can see this is my QX7, and this is obviously just a keyboard so we can type on Betaflight. So let me just see if I can kind of get past all that and show you what we're working with. All right, let me go ahead and knock this out real quick. Now, on this controller, I'm going to actually start this off by using the... Uh, well, i got to find my tweezers here real quick. Uh, we're going to be using... I'm going to be showing you how to do this using uh, soft cereal. Okay, because this is what one of my customers is doing, so which was the point of making this video to begin with was to help him out. So um, what we're going to do here, and I want to show you this based on this uh, here, we use side A, and if you can, well, you're not going to be able to see that that well. Hold on, let me see if I can kind of get the light chilled out a little bit. All right, well, you won't be able to see that uh, very well. Let me see if I can. Okay, so if we're looking at this right here, right, I think that's going to work. Yeah. My eyes are old, I can barely see. All right, so starting uh, from the top down, right, we're gonna be looking at, uh, I think you've got ACC, S port, S bus in, S bus out, RSSI uh, out, and then you've got TX, RX, and ground. That's what you should be looking at if you're looking at A. Okay, so off memory, ACC, S port, S bus in, S bus out, RSSI out, TX one, RX one, and ground. That's about right. Okay, so what we want to do is, um, to do this, we're going to be connecting the following wires, and we're going to be using, uh, so let me show you where I'm at here. Uh, we're going to have just like this, okay? Uh, that's the wrong angle, so let's do this. Okay, so we're going to be connecting, um, on the hobby wing stack, we're going to be connecting, uh, this is ground, 5 volt, S bus, uh, and then we have, I believe this is RSSI, and, and then we have our TX1, okay? And I'm gonna show you how to use this one and how to configure a beta flight, but let's just solder it real quickly. On this side, we're gonna be using um, the following wires. And if I plug them in here, you'll see exactly how they go together. Oops, sorry, just like this. All right, so we are gonna be using our five volt. We will not be using our S port, although you need to have done your firmware update, so you would have used this when doing the firmware updates, um, the green one, right? And then you keep winding these out. It's gonna be S bus in, we're not gonna be using that, but we will be using S bus out. And this is our RSSI out. And this is going to be our TX, or yeah, our TX, which we're not gonna be using right now. And this is our RX, and this is our ground. And the RX we are gonna be using, okay? So we're gonna take these three wires, and I guess for right now just for safety, so we don't do anything stupid with them. We're just gonna kind of wind them up and just set them aside. As long as you just make sure, you know, there's nothing happening to them. They're not touching or you don't want them to touch anything on the board either. So just kind of get them out of the way. All right. Okay, so these wires, we're gonna solder real quickly. Let me just get my iron here. And away we go. All right. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start from outside in, which means we're starting with ground. Let's go ahead and do that. And usually I have something holding the boards down, but I'm trying to do this quickly because we have to do it a couple times. 
So please make sure you have the board secured. Okay, there's my ground. I'm gonna do five volt next. Okay, and then we're gonna go over to our S bus. It's our gray wire. Okay, then we're gonna do our RSSI, which is our orange wire. And then we're gonna do our um, RX1, which is our yellow wire. Okay, which is our S port, right? It's, it's our inverted, or it's our, yeah, inverted S port. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do next, right? So now that we've got these connected, now again, this is gonna be for an S bus um, setup. I'm mean, sorry, um, a, a soft serial setup. So let me give you this view now. Get this out of the way. And here we go, all right? Now, I've got our, um, I'm gonna turn this around a little bit so it's like this because I've got this cable here to connect. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. And then that's gonna go to our power supply. All right, and then now we can light the board up, right? So here we go. Now I have already bound this receiver, okay, to this 2X7, all right? And I've done the updates before I did any of this. So make sure you do your updates. There is a February, I believe, 2019 update that helps with telemetry. Make sure you go to Fry Sky's website and do that, okay? Let me zoom out. And now we're gonna do a split screen of this screen and this screen. And here we go. All right. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do, and I'm gonna move this out of the way so I can use the keyboard, is we're gonna to wanna to check our update as far as our firmware and see what we're running. Oh, I gotta get all this stuff out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in to the USB. I'm not gonna apply power just yet. I just wanna plug in the USB. I want to see what Betaflight tells me, okay? <clears throat> and actually, we don't need the screen that big right now, so let's do it this way. There we go. All right, so we're just going to, I really want you to focus on Betaflight right now. So let's do that, okay? Here we go. Uh, so we're going to connect, and we're going to go to our CLI, and we're going to type in the word version. Make sure that we're running our Omnibus version. So in this case, I took it to 3.5.7. We can go higher than that, and we will most likely, but I just wanted to see 3.5.7 uh, where it was at, where it may have come out of the box like that. Um, all right, so uh, in this case, um, how you're gonna set this up is we're gonna go to, well, we're gonna disconnect here, and then we're gonna reconnect, okay? And we're gonna go to our ports tab, and we what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave UART one, it's a serial port, um, and we also, now we need to set up our uh, soft serial, right? Because you have UART1, you cannot turn this on. If you put this on smart ports, you can start getting your telemetry. Most of you who've done this are gonna know exactly what's gonna happen. Um, you're gonna end up canceling out both ports and they're both gonna turn off. See, now you have no serial and you have no telemetry. You can only have one. So we're gonna leave serial on and now we're gonna activate our soft serial. Okay, now this is, this is for people who are planning to use the other UARTs for other things. For example, the customer I'm dealing with here, here, let me do this like this so you can, um, there. So, okay, so the customer that this video is for, right, the person that got a hold of me to ask me for help on this, they're gonna be using a GPS, uh, so they're gonna need both their TX and RX, and they are using smart audio, so they're gonna need their uh, TX for that. So the way this would be wired is you're gonna use your TX from uh, UART 6, to hook up your smart audio and you're going to use your TX and RX from UART3 to hook up your GPS. Well, that means you can't hook up your telemetry from your um, uh, uh, Slim Plus, right? Now, you can try to get the, uh, I don't know if the F port, I don't even know if that protocol is on here actually. Um, I don't think so, uh, but I don't know, I have to check. But anyways, um, so we were going to be using these two wires, right? And uh, I'll check on, on, uh, on a couple other options, but this is the option that uh, is going to be best suited. So you're out of TX's at this point, except for TX1, but TX1 can't be used if you're using RX1, which is your S bus UART, right? Uh, or your S bus uh, receiving uh, channel. So we need to activate soft serial. And what soft serial will do is it'll use the processor to create a virtual serial port, basically a software serial port that we can use uh, instead of a, a hardware-based 
And by doing that, we can use our inverted signal and we can get accomplish this. But this is not as easy as it sounds sometimes and setting that can be difficult. So here's what we're gonna do. So let's get back to the screen and um, let's go ahead and get started here. So the first thing we're gonna do after we set up, now we've already gone into ports and we've activated our serial port, right? Okay, so now what we have to do is we're gonna go to configuration and I don't care about any of this, so skip this because it says no bearing on me whatsoever. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna drop down and we're gonna select our serial, ba serial based uh, receiver and we're gonna use SBUS and then we're gonna select, so I think I've already been in here, soft serial and we're gonna have tel tel telemetry. I don't care about the rest of these, we're not wor worrying about these right now. These two and this and click save and reboot. Okay, now you have soft serial and in old boards like the NAS32, when you did that, you would see the soft ser serial ports automatically appear, but they don't here, okay? What we have to do next is we have to go to our CLI. And in our CLI, we have to type the following. You're gonna type the word resource, and you're gonna look for your TX1 resource because you're not using it, right? So we wanna take that resource and give it to a soft serial port, okay? So in this case, because um, you can only have TX1 or UART1 and UART2 are going to be the only things that can do soft serial, all right? So you've got it, and there's no UART2 on here. So we're going to look at UART1, and of UART1, here is your serial TX1 address. That's the AO9, okay? We want to give it to a soft serial now. So we're going to create a software serial port by doing the following. First thing you're going to do is you're going to type the word resource, all right? Space, type the word serial, underscore, TX. So far, we're right. We're trying to allocate a resource for our serial TX. Now we have to give the serial TX a port, right? The port is going to be 1 1. 1 1 is the 1 would be a hardware based, and 1 1 means it's software based, okay? So since it is TX1, we're going to make it TX11, which will be the software based version of TX1, right? So we're going to go serial TX11, and then we're going to give it the same address, A09. Hit enter. Oops, sorry. Resource man, after all that, I typed it wrong. Serial underscore TX space 11 space A09. Hit enter. Okay? Now it'll tell you it's already assigned to serial TX1, which is your hardware UART, and now it's going to say it's free. It's set to, uh, sorry, and now it's saying the resource, which is the serial one that we just created, is set to A09. Okay? Perfect. That's what we wanted. Now click save. Okay? Now, just to show you a difference between what we saw in the CLI and what we see now, just go back and connect. Go to CLI and type resource. Now what you're going to see is where it used to say serial 1, serial TX1, it's now going to say serial TX11, okay? So now all your hardware serial TX um, ports are here, and then after that comes your software, and then now your hardware RX. And we don't need to change any hardware RX because we're using um, the S bus, which is great for us, okay? So we're just going to leave it like that. All right, with that done, we are now going to type in the following. Type in feature, okay? And there's a reason for this. Type in feature, and you wanna make sure you have RX serial, soft serial, and telemetry. These three things, okay? Just make sure those are there. If they're not, then you need to go back and make sure that you've activated the following, okay? And to do that, the soft serial, you turn the tab on, the telemetry, you turn the tab on, okay? All right, now that that's done, we're gonna type exit. And make sure you click save, okay? I, th I, I think I did. I'm gonna go check real quick. And to check, here's what you're gonna see. When you go to ports now, boom, there's your soft serial port. It didn't exist before. It was, it, soft serial was activated, but be, in, when Betaflight made some changes a, lo a long time ago, one of the things was if you did not activate the port, you would not see the option for soft serial here just because you flipped the tab on. So now that we've got it, now we need to tell it it's our smart port. So we're gonna come over here, which is gonna be our port, our S port, right? We're just gonna come over here and we're gonna say, okay, Smart port. So now you can see UART1 receiving is soft, is um, S bus or serial, and UART1 transmitting is going to be smart port. Okay? Click save and reboot. Okay. So, so far we're set, right? Now we should be able to get telemetry and we should be able to use our S bus. So let's give this a test. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my transmitter. Okay? Welcome to I'm going to go ahead and put that at the bottom here. And I'm going to do a split screen now between the two. One, two, what the heck, two, there, okay? So you will see as soon as I flip the power supply on that we are bound, okay? There it is right there. So you can see now that we have good RSSI. We have good signal, I mean. Let me, let me kind of 
Zoom down there. Oops, wrong way. Right there. Okay. You don't really need to see the board that much right now because it doesn't really matter on the board. But here's this. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go. I made this as our, my last model before um, I got to my sim simulator uh, model. But we're going to go here. Let me hit this again. Hit menu. Then hold down page. Hold down page. Here's our telemetry screen. And right now, you're going to, by default, you're going to have telemetry coming in for the battery voltage to the receiver and then your RSSI. Okay. But what we want to do is we want to make sure we got everything connected. So let's in beta flight. The first thing we want to do here is let's go to our ports and make sure everything is saved, and it is. Now go to configuration. Now one thing we did do is we gave RSSI a value here. So let's go ahead and select our RSSI uh, analog input. Click save and reboot. Okay. I'm gonna click save and reboot one more time. All right. On my computer, I have a little bit of a hiccup there with that. Okay. So now when we connect, now you're going to see your RSSI right here. Okay, so now you've connected your RSSI using that cable. God darn, there it is. All right, so we're good there. We have our ports still set up, smart port and serial, and we have our configuration page. And again, I care about nothing else on this page except the little settings that I needed here, okay? Now, the, what we want to do is we're going to take our controller and go down to discover new sensors, and we're going to hit enter, okay? And what you're going to notice is there is nothing populating. Well, you have are these two right here. This thing should be filling up if it's got telemetry flowing, right? But it doesn't. Here's what we do next. The next thing we do is we go to our CLI, and I'm gonna kinda put the keyboard down here so I can type. And we're gonna type the following set TLM and hit enter. And you wanna look at the following settings here. Now we are using inverted because we are using the RX off of the, uh, S, uh, the R9 Slim, and that is an inverted um, S port. Okay, so the, what we want to do here is we want to come down and we want to say set TLM inverted equal on. Hit enter, type save. Okay, now the board's going to reboot, right? And now look at our transmitter. We now have all of our features running. Okay, we are getting our, you can see now that I can tell you that on my um, on my uh, battery supply, which this is considered your VFAS here. So let me let me just make this a full screen. Sorry, let's do that. So as you can see here, you have your RSSI, you have your uh, we had the first two. Now you have your VFAS, which is your uh, battery. You have your um, other options here that you can look at. And uh, you know your current, uh, yeah. There's not much going on there, and you can select which ones you want. The most important thing is you are now getting your telemetry through soft serial. Okay, that's an awesome feature. And if people want to discuss how much soft serial taxes your processor, it's not enough to worry about it if you need to use all your ports for something. All right, I've got a seven percent processor here, um, and yes, there are some mathematics behind how it can get worse. But I'll be honest with you that you won't experience that on this board, uh, and I wouldn't worry about it at all. Okay, especially if you're going to be using a GPS and um, uh, which one call it, and you're going to be using smart audio. I mean, my gosh, don't worry about it. Okay, so once we're done, and, and I'm going to go ahead and kind of change this around a little bit. So now I've just shown you how to do telemetry using soft serial, how to activate it and get that done right. Now we're gonna go back and we're gonna disable soft serial and we're gonna to try to use the um, ports given to us uh, if we didn't sensor have to loss. use soft serial, okay? So um, I don't know which sensor just went out, uh, but I'm not worried about that here. Uh, and I can tell you if you wanna see, I'm gonna adjust the voltage and you're gonna see this uh, VFS adjust. So let's see how it went to 12.4 and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, bring it down to, let's see. I'll go sub 11 maybe. Okay, and it's gonna catch up. And it's it's gonna start going, well I didn't take it to sub 11, but I can't, so watch. Okay, so we know that we've got good signal here because I am adjusting it on my own and it is dropping as it needs to, okay? So it should go below 11, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna take it back up now and leave it alone. And now we're gonna hit about 13 volts. All right, so we know that that's working perfect, right? So now we can go ahead and say stop discovery, okay? All right, so now we can go back to our home page, hit page, and uh, whoops, let me go ahead and hit menu, hold it down. Okay, so now we can go to our screen, 
And we could say we want to do bars, numbers, whatever you want. So I'm going to do numbers. And I'm going to say I want my I want my RSSI. Where is that here? RSSI, right there. And then I want my VFAS. Let me go VFAS. Uh, did I miss it? I think I did. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Come on. There you go. VFAS. There we go. And then you can pick whatever you want. I don't know. But I'm going to pick these two. Right? And that's my display number one. So now when I hold the page down, there you go. I've got my RSSI. I've got my VFAS. And then by doing that, we can start setting things up. Like, hey, if our power goes below 1350, I want this radio to tell me something, right? So, I mean, we'll get into all that later, but I think I may have on mine already set it up, but let me see. Uh, let's see, special functions, no, because this is it. I, I wiped this out, I forgot, I remember now I did it. All right, so if we go back, let me see. Yeah, so I don't have that, so let's, uh, let's see. I wonder if I say, okay, Maybe I could do this real quickly for you guys. I don't know, because I always I have my settings a certain way. But if, if uh, let me see. Where is this? That's not what I wanted. This is wrong. Sorry, I, I need to go back and do it under here first. And I should have not even messed with it. Let me just get rid of it. And, oh my goodness. Okay, let me just get exit. Sorry, guys. I was hoping to have this for you. And it should have been here, here. And it should have been here. And I believe that if it's going to say, if, oh my God, what did I do? No. If. Is less than where is it there you go if and then I'm gonna go to my VFAS here okay if VFAS is less than and then we'll give it to oh I don't know let's just say if it's less than 13 volts so I'm gonna take this to 13 Okay, and and let's just say um, SA is in arm position, so I'll just flip that switch, right? And I will say if it's like that for one second, okay? That's my logical switch, right? And I'll go to the next page and I'll say, because I screwed this part up, so let me just go ahead and edit this. And I wanna say if my LA LA1, which is what I just created. If it's true, wait, what is that? L1, there we go. If it's true, I want it to play a sound, and I want the sound to be low battery. I know I screwed this up, sorry guys. I mean, it's, I don't, I've done these a long time ago and then I quit. Wait, where is it? I guess I don't have many of my, uh, oh wait, no, you know what? I don't think it's play sound, maybe it's play track track there we go and you know what I wanted to say is low battery oh I didn't plan on doing that so low back okay and I think we're gonna play it like let me see what this one I cannot remember okay so let's just try this all right so we know it's true and now we're gonna go to our page okay and we're gonna drop the voltage low battery there you go okay I moved it too quickly, so let me go ahead and drag it back. Low here. battery. Okay, now what I don't know is I want to see how much, how many times it's going to do that. So let me hit, um, hold the page button down. There we go. Okay, so we're going to menu page, uh, page, page, page. Okay, now, I don't know what I said here, but I think we're going to edit this and we're going to say duration. Low battery. And I think this will just keep playing it. I think. But let's Low see. Yeah, battery. I think so. I think if you don't put a number on it, it'll play it like continuous Low after battery. a certain amount of seconds. So let me go to the next page. And I think I set that for five. Low battery. 
And I don't know if that is... Low battery. Low battery. Yeah, that's the time it plays. So, because if I go to ten, if I go to five or six, it's going to take it a while to say it, right? So watch. Low battery. But if I go to one... Low battery. If I don't know if I go to exclamation point, I don't think that's going to do anything for me. Low but battery. there we go. If you leave it at one, Low then it's going to keep saying it every second, right? Low so battery. what we would say is we could say like, okay, at five, we want it to play every five seconds. Low battery. And I know this is kind of getting out of the what we talked about, but um, Low battery. then we could say, for example, okay, we're going to do another one, and it's going to say Low battery. if this, Low battery. and we go to VFAS, Battery. Okay, and we're going to pick a voltage knob Low like. Low battery. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's pick like. Low battery. Uh, this is just for an example. Let me go to 11 volts. Okay. Low battery. Now we're going to say, and our SA Low switch battery. is still armed. Okay. And we're going to leave the duration alone. Low battery. And we're going to say, okay. Low battery. Okay, let me hit exit. Sorry. And then what we're going to say is, okay, Low if this battery. happens, then we want to go to L01, and we're going to play, Low battery. and we're going to go to low bat again, Low battery. but this time we're going to say we want it to play faster. Low battery. Low battery. Low battery. Okay. Low this battery. should have been L2, sorry. Low battery. Okay. And we said that if it fell, low battery, oh my God, low shut up. Battery, low battery, <laughs> low battery, low Sorry. battery. Let me go back. I obviously battery, set this wrong. Low battery, low battery, low battery. Okay, yeah, low this one we want to say this should battery, be if this is active and this battery, isn't. So I apologize. I need to battery, let me clear that real quick. Battery, low battery. No, no. We're gonna go edit. Battery. I'm gonna raise the battery low back up battery. so this thing shuts up real quick. Low battery. Low battery. Okay, it should be low shutting up here battery. in a second. Okay, so we want to say uh, and oh, let's see. We had the switch set. We could say if L01 is true, I guess. No, nah, we don't want to do that. I don't know how I would want to do this to really... I have to think here. So we want to say if it's armed, which we did. Low battery. Okay, so that's fine. I think that's fine. Um, and then I think what we'll do is we'll go to page. And we'll exit and go back to here. And that's our other function. If it's at 13, it's going to play it like that. We want to edit this because we want it to say... Low battery. Low battery. Low battery. Okay. All right, so we have these both going, but this is at 13 and this is at 11. Let me see what I would do next. I know this is totally out. <sighs> okay, so maybe if we do... Oh, let me see. I don't know. I'm going to try this real quickly, but if I can't, then... Uh, we want to say that if, oh, no, that's why, edit, oh, darn it, it needs to be less than uh, this one, okay, so, but we want to also say, and, uh, and we want to say if L01 is active basically then we want to play that one okay uh no 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 we don't want to do that we want to say like this just leave this out if this is there we go so if it's down and armed okay now i think i got it let me go back now let me hit exit and i think what we're going to do is we're going to go to the first one we're going to edit and we're going to say and and this will be a kind of a quick cheating way to do this, but if I want to say LO2 is not active, which would be the exclamation point, so let's do that. I think that'll work, right? 
LO2 is not active. There we go. Okay, so I think the way this is worded now is going to say, hey, look, if LO2 is not active and we are below 13 volts, go ahead and play the battery. Right? So it should do it right now, actually. Okay. And uh, if VFAST is, yeah. So let's do edit. Is greater than, is less than 13 volts. Then we want, and switch LO2 is not active. That should work. Then we want to say play. Okay, so that's not active. And we should, I believe I put this below the 13 volt mark. But let me check. Oh my God, it's right at 13 volts. Okay, so let's see if we, Low there we battery. go. Okay, so we should be hearing this play every five seconds now, right? Low battery. Now, once we take it below 11 volts. Low battery. Low battery. Now it should be playing faster. I think if I did that right. Oh, below 11. We're not below 11. battery. Low battery. Okay, let's see where we're at here. Low battery. Oh, for love of that. Okay. So, and now we arm it, right? Low battery. All right. Low battery. So now what we're going to see. Low battery. Let me show you what we did. Low Sorry, it took battery. me a while, but I think this is going to be okay. Low battery. Low battery. Okay, battery. so we have Low number two battery. playing. So you can Low see number battery. one, LO1 is not bold Low anymore, so it's battery. not active. Low All right, battery. and we can see here that LO2 Low is active battery. because it's Low below 11 battery. volts, and we are Low in arm position. Battery. Now, if I turn it off, now one is going to be in arm position. Low uh, I mean, it's going to qualify for one, sorry, meaning that the battery's low, okay? And if I'm Low arming it, battery. then it's going to go to Low two. But if I raise battery. the battery back up, Low now... Battery. One is active. Does that make sense? I think so. All right, Low so follow battery. this if you want to have a couple different options. On, and this is why I like telemetry to the receiver, uh, to the transmitter, battery. because by doing that, um, I'm going to turn all that off now. All right, so because by Low doing battery. that, hold on, let me, um, let me edit this real quick. Low yeah, battery. yeah, yeah, shut up. Okay. Low battery. Low battery. All right, so let me go ahead and I'm going to change this Low value battery. make it more realistic for me. So I'm just going to put it at 12 volts right now so we can get this shut up. Okay, there we go. All right, so what we can do now is we can have our controller. I, I mean, trust me, there's a lot more. I have a ton of stuff set on mine, um, but uh, I just try to do these off memory real quickly because there's so many logical switches, so much cool things you can do with this. Like, um, I, I don't know, I, I wish, I know it's not part of the video, but man, it's really cool. So if, if like you... Uh, if you um, if you wanted to take like, let me see if I could do this, because this is one that I found helpful. I know it's off topic here, so please fast forward. I understand that you're not may not be interesting, but I used my uh, switch in the back here, right? This is a two way switch, the big one. Okay, so normally it's down when I'm flying, but if I flip it up, what it's going to do? Watch, see, it's up, it's up, like it's up towards the sky now. I tell it I want it to override, and I want it to override. Uh, you can, uh, sorry, channel one, which is my throttle, right? And I want it to do, um, now let me see what happens, because I think this is right. Okay, so when I go to my values for throttle, okay, and I kind of want to see it a different way here. So let me go to page, whoops, page, 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 there we go. Okay. So what I wanted to do, and that's not exactly, <laughs> that did not accomplish what I wanted, but I want to show you real quickly. So if I tell it, I want to do a um, override of my uh, throttle. And this is important for me when I'm testing out quads. So I'm going to tell it I want to override 90, 9 to negative 90, right? Okay, so let me show you what happens. So let's say I'm flying. Here's my throttle. And then I flip the switch. I automatically drop to where my throttle, if you want to see the value of it, uh, will be at... No matter where I put my stick, my throttle is going to be at 1039. Now, if I flip it off, I go back down. So, I mean, I have to obviously calibrate this. Um, so, if we did calibrate it and we gave it the right value right here, uh, we would want this to read. We want to edit it. And we would want the minimum uh, to go up till it says 1000 right here. 
Okay, yeah, and we want the maximum to go to where it says 2,000, right there. Okay, and then we're gonna take to the middle roughly. That's our subject, which is fine. So now if I show you what that did, that little switch right there is gonna save my butt because I would tell it in real, and realistically I would say, okay, I don't want it to go like that low, but I want it to uh, override to let's say, uh, let's say this, all right, 80. Now, here's your value, okay? Here's the switch on, okay, 1090. So what it's doing for me is it's saying, okay, I'm gonna, it's basically like putting my stick. So the reason I do this, and I know this is totally off setting up the uh, telemetry, but I'm showing you some of the benefits to having your radio actually doing more than what you're used to having to do, is if I'm flying and um, I want to test my oscillation when I cut my throttle and then hit it again, right? Let's say I'm tuning my, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm tuning my pids, right? Well, I want it to be consistent every time, meaning I want to cut my throttle and hit it again exactly how I would every time so I can test without any difference in my adjustments of the throttle stick or whatever. So I set my stick for that. And what I was do is as soon as I'm flying, I can flip that switch, it'll hit the designated uh, set speed or set uh, throttle, right? Which is 1091 here instead of 1000. So you've gone up uh, almost 10%, okay? Um, and so it cuts the motors, leaves it spinning at 10%. And when I'm ready to kick it back, I don't even have to move my throttle stick. See, so look, if you look at the screen here, I'm at 1734, flip my switch, doing 1091, let it go back up. I mean, it's like hitting it just like that, but you don't have to touch the switch. So you're able to test with perfect accuracy every time instead of having user input and maybe being off a little bit. So you really can't get the same test environment when you were testing your pits, okay? And you could do this for anything. I mean, you could adjust certain aspects of your flying this way. And this is what I'm gonna do on my uh, PID, uh, PIDs is you're gonna see me configure the radio to do all the turns and flips so that I don't have to do my input and then maybe not get it exactly how it should have been, okay? But anyways, this is another switch that I thought was really cool. Um, and again, these are things that part of it's gonna come from telemetry. So as we were looking earlier, um, oops, as we were looking earlier, uh, we've got our telemetry set and um, we've got, you can set your alarm for your RSSI, but look at all the stuff coming in. I mean, it's, it's updating, right? And this is great. So this is why I say it's important to get this done, all right? And I know that there was an issue with this board, the Omnibus F4SD firmware, okay? And I'm gonna see if we can make that happen now. So now we're gonna go ahead and wire it as if you're not using soft serial. All right, so let me turn my radio off. still connected. Yeah, yeah, I know, okay. So let's turn that off. And now we're gonna go back and change the way this is done, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do is power it off. And I'm gonna give you this other angle because I need to change the soldering real quick. There we go. Okay, now, instead of, let me disconnect all this and disconnect this and just work on the board. Instead of using these, I think this time I'm going to go ahead and uh, masking tape this down because I don't really want it moving at this point. So let me go ahead and put some masking tape on here. If I can get it off. There we go. All right. Leave it like that. Bring in the flashlight, magnifying glass thing. Okay, so one of the things we're gonna do now is we're gonna automatically just take off the soft serial uh, connection that we did on the TX1, and that is using the uh, inverted um, cable. Now, we're gonna try a couple things. It'll be trial and error. I mean, that's pretty much it. So what we wanna do then is we're gonna say, okay, we've got uh, TX3 right here, right? And if we're not gonna be using a, um, a uh, GPS or something to take that port, I'm just gonna go ahead and let me go ahead and, and, and tin this port up, all right? Now, um, we have two options here. We have the uninverted um, uh, port, which is the green, and then we have the inverted, which is the yellow. So what we wanna do here is I'm just gonna take the yellow again, okay? And we're gonna give this a shot, that's it. All we're gonna do is give it a shot, okay? We'll put that right on TX3, okay? And that's the only change we're gonna make right now. Now we're gonna go back into our computer on Betaflight. Let me show you this is at, all right? And again, this is gonna be a trial and error here because I kinda of wanna do this part in real time and see what happens. So we're gonna click connect. Oops, I have to plug in the USB, sorry. Plug in the USB. Holy moly, there we go. Okay. And now we're gonna connect and we're gonna get go back 
to the make, redo the changes that we made, right? Now, don't worry about this because the board isn't laying flat. I guess I could make it lay flat if I wanted to. So here, let's just do that. Okay. All right. All right. It's about as flat as it's going to get. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our configuration. And we are going to, well, actually, we can go to ports. And we're going to disable this port and click save and reboot, okay? I'm going to go back in the order. Of, and now we go backwards, okay? So I'm going to connect. And I just do this for me. Uh, ports is soft zero is not being used. So now we're going to go to configuration. Uh, actually, we're going to go to our CLI, sorry. And we're going to type resource. And remember, we have to now get rid of that serial TX11. And we're going to put it back to serial TX1. So we're going to say resource serial underscore TX1 A09, right? Because that's what it is right here, TX1. Yep. Yeah. And we're going to hit enter. And it's, oh, God, no, what did I do? Oh, whoops. I forgot. I put 109. Sorry. Oh, man. Resource space serial underscore TX one A09. Hit enter. And then type save. Okay. Now we've given that resource back to our actual hardware UART. Okay. So we're going to click connect. We go to ports. Now all of a sudden our soft serial is gone. But let's go back to configuration and make sure that we just disable soft serial. We don't even need to have it activated. Okay. So we had a 6% CPU load here. I don't know if we're going to see a, much of a drop or not, but let's just check. I cannot remember if we'll see a drop or not. Um, no, we're still at 6% or 6 or 7%. Okay, that's fine. Now, we still have our, our, our SSI that's not functioning very well because we have our radio off, and this is a different setting. I'm going to show you how to adjust later. But for right now, what we care about now is doing the following. So we want to now go to our ports, and we said we hooked up our smart port to um, UART3. TX. So let's click save and reboot. All right. Now we're going to take our radio and we're going to put it right here. And I'm going to move the, radio, uh, the receiver and we're going to test and see trial and error. And I'm going to give you a shot of the radio real quick. Welcome so here's to the radio. TX. I'll, do a, I'll do a split screen. There we go. Okay. All right. So we're waiting now to flip the power on. Oops. Let me go ahead and power up. Sorry, guys. Need to plug in the uh, cable here to power up the flight controller. There we go. Okay. So now you should be seeing there, there you go. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and power up the flight controller. Low there should see There's our air. <laughs> God, not again. Okay. So um, we're set here. And uh, now we want to go to start. We want to go check our telemetry. So we're going to go to page, hit, uh, sorry, uh, hold down menu, hold down page, hold down page again, and see if we're populating. And sure enough, we are. Okay. Because we used the same um, RSSI, I'm not RSSI, oh my God. Because we use the same configuration, and let me just show you. Okay. On our CLI, and I want you to see something. Uh, um, let me see, set TLM, right? Okay, now I have inverted on, right? Okay. Um, our settings can sit like this, and we're going to be okay for the most part. Now, you're going to see it stop right here because I'm in the... Um, Sensor lost. Yeah, 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 I know. I'm in the uh, uh, CLI, so it's going to hiccup here. But um, what you can tell is if I click exit now... Okay, it's, and it reboots. It's going to populate all back up again. Low battery. There you go. Okay. All right. So we're good there. Okay. And from there, um, what we can do is I did want to show you what happens if we do something like um, go to the CLI and say set, under, uh, set space TLM underscore half duplex. Now I'm going to hit enter to see what the value is. It says half duplex is on. If I turn it off, for example, equals off, hit enter, type save. Now when it reboots, That's I will so not get anything. Okay, so half duplex must be activated. All right, that's without a doubt. Now, the other thing is, is that the set inversion at this point, so if I click connect again, and I go to CLI, and I say set TLM underscore inverted equals off. And I click save. Watch. Let me 
click connect, okay? With our inverted set to off, we have nothing, okay? So we have to go back to our CLI, and you have to make sure the following is set, okay? Set TLM underscore inverted equals on. Enter, save, okay? Now when it reboots, what we're gonna see, and I'll show you here real quickly, all right? Let's go to our set, TLM, hit enter, okay? Now, you see how um, set TLM inverted is on and set half duplex is off? Okay, so to do this, you wanna go to set, TLM underscore half duplex equals on, and then click save. Okay, once it reboots, we are back up and running again, okay? But the point of that is to show you the following, and I, I wanna make sure that I did that. Okay, see how your inverted is on? So now watch what happens. Set TLM, I'm just gonna scroll up to off, hit enter, and click save. Watch. Low battery. Still does your telemetry, right? The reason being is you're on UART 3. Your inversion and uh, inverted and non-inverted settings don't affect anything but UARTs 1 and 2, all right, when they're in soft serial. You're not going to affect UART 3 because UART 3 doesn't change, right? That's a hardware base and you can't, if we could change it, it'd be great, but you can't, right? So this is how it's set right here. You're not going to be changing it through the CLI, okay? So at the end of the day, if you're going to use an inverted signal like your um, uh, uh, extra cable on here, then you're fine, right? Uh, and you should have no problems at all making this work. So either way, but by, by habit, the answer is when you're setting up your uh, telemetry, make sure to um, make sure to use your set TLM underscore inverted, set it to on if you're going to use that inverted signal because that way you'll be functioning without any problem. Um, there's one last thing we're going to test real quick and this I have not tested yet, so let's give it a shot. What we're going to do here is we're going to take the actual smart port uninverted signal, right, which is the green wire, and we are going to try to set that up and see if that works. Okay, now I have not tried that yet because I'm used to just using, if they give me an inverted option, I'm going to use it, right? But we can, I think we can still do it. So what we're going to do now is we are going to disconnect our flight controller. Telemetry lost. And we are going to now disconnect the yellow cable. I don't think I'm going to need to do much. I think I'll just try to... Hold this here, disconnect, all right? Now this would apply, what I'm about to do now would apply to people that do not have an inverted signal. Let's say you have the R9 Mini, not the MM where they added the inverted uh, S port, right? So let's just say you have the Mini and you're running an F4 board. Well, then you gotta go back to soft serial. So let me just kind of give you a different angle here so I can use the old man goggles. There we go. Now I'm gonna take the uninverted green and I'm going to connect it to TX1, and we're going to reactivate S port, or soft, sorry, soft serial, okay? We're going to reactivate it, and we're going to see if the uninverted will work. It should, theoretically, it should. Let's just see if it will. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to bring the, uh, uh, the, um, this here real quick because I just I need to type real quickly so let me go ahead and just go to remember now on reports uh, we're gonna go ahead and disable on three because we are not using three anymore because that's gonna need the inverted signal so let's go to the let's connect to reports and well, yeah that's right okay so we're gonna go to configuration and we're gonna turn on soft serial, click save. Connect, go to our CLI, type in the word resource. We're gonna go back and find our AO9, which is our serial TX1. And remember, we're gonna type resource, serial underscore TX space 11, AO9, hit enter, save it, and that is signed to our soft serial. So now our soft serial should be active when we connect in our ports. There it is, and we're gonna assign it a smart port. We're going to click save. Okay. Now let's go ahead and connect. And we still have our RSSI here. All right. I believe we do. Yeah. Kind of. It's not looking very good, but I'm going to have to adjust it. I haven't tweaked it at all yet. Okay. 
So let me go ahead and go here. All right, now on our ports, we have smart port enabled. Configuration, everything looks good. Okay, so I'm gonna, uh, yeah. All right, now here's my radio. And my radio is dropping power. Let's go ahead and power up. Low battery, yeah. telemetry recovered. Okay, so now we have our telemetry recovered. You can see our RSSI is picked up. Let me give you a top view here. Okay, so let me shrink down just a little bit. All right, so now we're back. Bring our throttle down and let's go to our, let's go to our, and there you go. Okay, so now for those of you that that do not have, uh, and let me show you what we've got here. So if you go to your CLI now and you say set PLM, you see how inverted is off? You're running an uninverted signal using the green wire, okay? And because of that, you're going through the serial port and you're set, all right? So this uninverted does control what happens on that side. Uh, so as you can see now, well, Sensor because lost. I'm in the CLI, it won't work. So let me just exit real quick, okay? When it reboots, we'll start populating Good again. Battery. So for those of you running things, like I said, like the R9 Mini, um, and you have an F4 board, activate your soft serial. And when you activate your soft serial, look at that, our CPU load is fine. I think everything looks good. Have no problem there, our SSI is working great. And that's right, I never checked receiver. Let me go ahead and turn this around, just so you can see you have both working. And I'll just set mine. Okay, and click save. And now all of a sudden, look at that. And remember, I got that one switch, flips it around, and there we go. So. Um, that is how you make this work. Okay, so that is the instruction. That is a 51 minute video because I got kind of carried away into the flipping the switches, the log logical switches, but you gotta understand, this is an excellent safety feature, okay? Because you can tell the controller now to start doing things, commands. So if you're in your goggles, man, you're in the zone and you're missing, you're completely missing your um, uh, LiPo uh, voltage, right? Or you're missing something else, whatever it is that is your ticker that, hey, or your RSSI you're not paying attention that your RSSI is low, right? Then you can tell it, oh, hey, when my RSSI hits this thing or whatever it may be, I want you to tell me to land. So, and just a real quick tutorial on that one, just because I love doing this. So let me show you something. We have our RSSI, right? Now my battery on my radio is dropping, okay? So that would also be a good one, but let me just go ahead and go back to my switches here and go to my logical, okay? And I wanna tell it, um, here, uh, we're going to do a function. I'm going to click here and I'm going to say, okay, if my uh, RSSI, wait, where am I? Okay, it's A, it's A is less than X, that's right. So if my RSSI, if my RSSI DB, I don't know, is less than Oh, let's just say, God darn, I'm going too far here. Um, let's say it's less than 60 and I'm armed, okay? And it lasts longer than, uh, no, that's not duration. Uh, it's gonna be delay, so let me go to delay. Uh, I don't, I, I think for the, well, this, is, this would be like, hey, you don't want it to do anything until it does it for a certain amount of time, right? But I'm not gonna worry about that actually because I'm not gonna keep this set like this. But let me just give you the idea. So if the RSSI drops below 60 dB, um, then I, that's, my, that's my logical switch, right? So that's kind of like if I toggled something. Let me go to page, oops, exit, go to page. So I'm gonna say that if that switch is flipped, so that's LO3, right? Okay, if that switch is flipped, then I want it to, let's just say, play a track. And the track will be, I don't know what is in here for RSSI. Um, uh, let's try uh, signal, let's just say signal critical, okay? And we're gonna just, uh, we want it to start immediately. Okay, and just keep playing that stuff. All right, so we're saying that if I'm, if my switch is down and I decide, I and my RSSI, and let's look at a value here. So let me go to my values of RSSI. Okay, so my RSSI is 100%. So let's just say I'm like, oh, um, oops, there. I have no RSSI. That's gonna drop 
right? Uh, Telemetry lost. Boom. And then what it's going to start telling me is, oh, you know what? It's selling me no data. Sorry. That's not going to help me either because I didn't want to do a telemetry lost. That's going to kick in my... Signal. Critical. Oh. Telemetry recovered. Okay, so it gave me the critical warning, but I wanted it to be faster than that. Um, but that's because I lost total telemetry, so I'm not going to be able to probably duplicate that as quickly, but let me see if I can somehow. Um, let's just see what happens. Telemetry lost. Let me see if it's activated yet. Okay, so we should see here. Well, because I keep on plugging it, I can't get it, so that's not going to help me. Maybe if I plug it back in real quick. RF signal yeah. critical. Okay, so that, that's what I wanted to hear was the RF signal critical, but you can't get that if you unplug your receiver, okay? Um, and that was kind of my mistake here. But when you plug your receiver back in, it starts climbing up that. Uh, uh, RSSI, so it automatically sees it critical for just a second. So that's what you heard. But if I was flying and it dropped below that, it would just keep saying RS, uh, RF signal critical, and we keep doing it, right? And you could do it through anything. Uh, you, you can uh, set it up on your goggles to blink and do whatever. But I like using the logical functions here and the logical switches. I mean, I mean, it's amazing when you can have a virtual switch for anything that you're doing. So for example, if you're trying to keep your throttle under 60%, right, and you tell it, hey, um, I want to use a logical switch that says if I'm greater than, and I'm going to say if my uh, throttle, let me find it, I think it'll be like this. If my throttle uh, value is greater, now we're going to be at, let's just say, if my throttle value is greater than 50 and I'm armed, okay, uh, then I'm going to click exit, exit. And then I want to say, go to the next page. Okay, if this is true, right? If LO4 is true, then I want to, uh, let's say, play a track. And I don't know what track I'd play, but let's just say, um, uh, I'll just say too high, okay? And we're going to say, okay, exit, exit, okay. So, Two. see, so if I'm flying, and watch my screen here, right? You see my value, okay? So my value says if I'm above 50%, so right here, watch, Two. right Hi. there, okay? Boom, my radio is telling me automatically, dude, you're too high. Your throttle Two. is too high, Hi. okay? It's time to bring it down. Uh, you're, you're pushing the quad too much, okay? And so that's what we want to. That's what we want to check. As long as it's armed. Now, if it's not armed, it doesn't do it. These are the kind of things you can do, and they're really cool, right? So um, uh, I know I didn't get to show you that. I, I'm sorry, but it looked it looked like this. Sorry, I didn't realize that it wasn't on the screen. But check this out. So I mean, it's it's real simple. Okay. So the script. So play with these. Do whatever you want with them. I mean, they're really cool to do, and they can really make things happen. So you can tell it, hey, if I do this and I don't pay attention, land my quad, which wouldn't make sense. But there's a lot of things you can do to make the controller take over when you have a bad judgment or you're not paying attention, all right? And this is why telemetry to your radio is so important. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. Um, I, uh, hope you, I hope that helped you. Uh, and um, if you have any other questions, let me know. This was really important to show you guys, so I'm glad we got it done. If you don't, if you don't anything else, uh, please make sure to follow us or subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us and like us on Facebook. Uh, you can, whoops. You can hit me up at my email address, targetcyclonefg.com. And if not, God bless. Stay flying. Enjoy your Sunday with your family, guys. See you later. Bye.